This is Nabil Anan from Thailand, and he's six foot three. And his opponent is So Li U from Myanmar, and he's five foot seven. And at one Friday Fights 81 in September, they are going to clash. In this video, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. First, I'm going to go into their backgrounds when they came to one championship. And then we'll talk about their strengths. And finally, I will tell you which one I think is going to emerge victorious in this fight. Let's get into it. Let's start with So Le U. This Burmese fighter is also known as the Man of Steel because he can really absorb his opponent's hits. He's from a Lethwe background. And for those of you who don't know, Lethwe is a Burmese combat sport similar to Muay Thai, but there are distinct differences. For example, you have to win by knockout. Let me say that again. You have to win by knockout. If you don't knock someone out, it's a draw. It's also pretty much bare knuckles. You can wrap your knuckles in gauze or tape. Some people do electrical tape, but no gloves. So that's the background So Li U comes from. He has over 126 fights in Lethwei, 71 wins, and guess what? Only three losses. The rest are draws, so where he didn't knock someone out. That's incredible. He's knocked someone out 71 times. He made the transition to Muay Thai when he did his one championship debut, and after three fights and three knockouts, he got a $100,000 one championship contract. This is Nabil Anan. Like I said at the beginning, he's six foot three and fights at bantamweight at about 144 pounds. That means he's taller than all of his opponents. Most of his opponents have been in that five, six, five, seven range. He fought Superlek and lost. That was his first match in one. He fought Superlek, lost, was knocked out in the first round. But in the rest of his fights, he has won and won against some strong opponents, including Nakrob and Kulabdan and Felipe Lobo. The other thing to know about Nabil Anan is that he trains on Team Mehdi Zatu. And if you don't know Team Mehdi Zatu, they're led by, of course, the legend Mehdi Zatu of kickboxing and Muay Thai. And he always brings a new generation of very tough, high intensity young fighters that are exciting to watch. Nabil Anan is no different. So besides the height differential, how do these fighters stack up against each other? Let's get into that. Starting with Nabil Anan, of course he's got a reach advantage. He can throw a very long jab, throw very long right hooks, left hooks, and kick as well. Push kicks, he's gonna be able to keep his distance. That's one of his main advantages that he uses against his opponents. But the other thing is his elbows and knees. His elbows, he throws them like ordinary fighters or bantamweight fighters throw punches. Super long elbows can be used as fists. Same with their knees. In his fight against Kulabdan, he was able to get a lot of clinch work done, throwing knees, throwing elbows, and eventually get that knockout. In his fight against So Li U, Anan is going to need to keep the distance, but when So Liu inevitably closes that distance and comes in closer, Anan will have to do what he did with Kulabdan and Felipe Lobo. Grab the back of the head, go for that knee, throw those elbows, and then come back out, long range punches, long range kicks, continually do damage. I think what Nabil needs to do is actually just frustrate his opponent, use his range, come in close when he needs to, then get back out and again, use that range and score points. He doesn't need to get too many significant strikes. He just needs to make sure his opponent can't come in and deliver his own significant strikes. So to me, the keys to victory for Nabil Anan are going to be that distance, but also clinch work, elbows and knees to the head and make sure that he frustrates his opponent. All right, what about So Leu? How can he beat this super tall fighter who he has to look up to, throw punches up high to? Can he even reach his head with a kick? That's the big question. How is he going to deal with that? Well, naturally, we're going to expect him to want to close that distance, get in close, but he needs to avoid Nabil Anand's clinch work. So throw the significant strikes, 
throw really hard punches, don't go for high volume. Basically follow Superlek's playbook. Remember Superlek knocked out Nabil in the very first round. He did it with punches. I think someone like So Li Wu, who is from that Lethway background, where you have to knock someone out, is going to do very well against Nabil because he needs to go for a knockout and don't let Nabil score on him. I also want to see him do this early in the match. I don't want the match to go for So Le U more than two rounds. Don't give Nabil a chance to frustrate you or score those points with the long range because that's what has happened to a lot of fighters like Felipe Lobo. So instead, get in quick, throw the hardest punches you can, Man of Steel, and go for the knockout. That's what's going to get him the victory. So who's going to win? I told you I'd give you my prediction. It's very interesting because Nabil Anand is very young. He's 20 years old, super tall, as we all know. But So Li Wu has the experience and he's very durable and he throws hard punches. I think he is going to win. I really do. I'm not sure if he's going to get a knockout, but I do think he's going to win. Primary reason is given the background that So Leu has in Lethway. It's very hard to knock him out. That's how Nabil's just not going to be able to deal enough damage. And the Man of Steel is going to be able to take a hit, but then give one as well. And that hit's going to be harder. Breaking it down one step, Nabil will throw his hardest punch. So Leu will throw his hardest punch. And that's going to be a lot harder and probably give him more points in the judge's eyes. Of course, that's just my opinion. I could be wrong. I want to know what you think. Drop a comment down below, like and subscribe, and let's see who wins this fight.